Yeah, I was hanging out in Times Square, reminiscing to the rhythm of the city. Walking up and down Broadway, checking out all them fine babes and dancers on their way to class. Birdland, jazz corner of the world. Yeah, I played with Charles Mingus at Birdland one night. I said, Charles, can I play one with you? He said, yeah, come on, man. As long as the union don't bust us. Well, no sooner said than done, Mink has counted off Charlie Parker's Coco as fast as he could play it. And man, that was fast. Well, I got off two choruses without getting too bruised. And after the set was over, James Moody came over and gave me a big hug. And said, man, you made it. That made me feel real warm. It gave me the courage to keep on keeping on, Jack. Yeah, I sure felt good that night. Thank you very much. That, of course, was not my reminiscence. I did not play with Charles Mingus. That was Ronnie Cuber's reminiscence about playing with uh, Charles Mingus in Times Square. Uh, Charles Mingus is one of the great composers in American music. Notice I did not say jazz. I said American music. And this month, this semester, we're going to pay tribute to Charles Mingus because this is the 100th anniversary of his birth. Charles Mingus was kind of the quintessential New York composer. Despite the fact that he was born, uh, he was actually raised in Los Angeles, born in Arizona, but raised in Los Angeles. Uh, but he was kind of the quintessential New Yorker. Uh, wrote about the city in a lot of different com compositions. Um, really um, just kind of painted a picture in a lot of his pieces of New York City. And that, of course, was Nostalgia in Times Square. And um, that featured... Luke, did it feature Luke? Yeah. Luke Hintershie, Hintershie, ah, man, I know I was going to mess up. Luke Hintershie uh, on alto sax. And Ben Dixon on trumpet. Charles Mingus, and, and we'll talk a lot about Charles Mingus. Charles Mingus 
was a composer who wrote and really kind of reveled in close harmonies. Uh, you heard some major seconds there. He did that kind of thing quite often where he would have melodies where you'd hear major seconds and your ear goes, is that right? And yeah, it's right. That's exactly what he wanted. Uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll talk more about Mingus uh, in the next concert and we'll get into him quite a bit. Uh, we'll, we'll get into his music uh, a lot more. Actually, this next piece is another Mingus piece. This is a piece called Monin. There is a piece called Monin by... Um, um, Bobby Timmons, thank you. I, I knew that, but you know, when you get old, you forget things. Bobby Timmons, uh, that's a little bit more well known than Mingus's moaning. Mingus's moaning is something different. And Charles Mingus's moaning is one of these pieces where Charles Mingus layers things on top of another, one thing on top of another, another, another. And when you listen to the small ensemble version of moaning on an album called Blues and Roots, what you hear is the exact same thing you're going to hear here. Even though it's, there are fewer instruments, but he's layering them one on top of another, and he's getting this really, really big cacophonous sound that is akin to um, a kind of a church service, a kind of a, uh, a sanctified church service. Uh, one of the things that I am really getting into is Charles Mingus's connection to the Holiness Church. I'm going to do a lecture in Orlando, Florida on Charles Mingus's connection to the Holiness Church and how that plays out in his music. But you hear this kind of thing in his music where it's, it's just kind of this religious fervor and things build, 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 and to a climax, and then he brings things back down. Charles Mingus is brilliant at layering all these different things. This is Monin. Uh, this is going to feature um, Joel Caniff. It's going to feed, well, we'll talk about who played solos in a bit, but it's going to start off with uh, Joel Caniff laying things down on Monin.
Joel Kenneth playing the Pepper Adams baritones uh, groove. That's from Pepper Adams, was the original player on that. Joel Kenneth, nice job on that, Joel. How about I have a Joel? <laughs> Luke again, Luke Hintersheed. <laughs> Gabby Sanchez on flute. <laughs> Drew Powell on piano. Thank you very much. This next piece, we're, we're, we're honing in on the jazz ensemble territory. They're, just, they're working their way through the Duke Ellington catalog. So I thought, I want to get in on some of that too. Um, this is this is Satin Doll. This is Duke Ellington's most well-known, well, take the A-Train Satin Doll back and forth, most well-known tune. And this is a tune that is a wonderful tune, but it's a tune that can be kind of overdone a lot, uh, and, and you can kind of get tired of it uh, because you hear it so much, but it's a wonderful tune. However, this arrangement is wonderful. This is a Gerald Wilson arrangement. Gerald Wilson uh, was a long time, long time band leader, arranger, composer, um, just a tremendous, tremendous presence in the jazz world, and he did this arrangement in 1963 for Nancy Wilson. Nancy Wilson, of course, you all know she, Nancy should know Nancy Wilson because Nancy Wilson is the greatest singer to come out of Columbus, Ohio. And um, Nancy, and there's no argument about that. We're not even going. Even, even, there's no discussion. The greatest singer to come out of Columbus, Ohio, and out of the state of Ohio, Nancy Wilson. I said it. Yes, it's true. Um, Nancy Wilson. This is from an album called um, Yesterday's Blues, Today's Love Songs. I think that's right. Um, I, 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 think, I think that's right. Um, doesn't matter. But I just get hung up on stuff like that. Um, but this is Gerald Wilson's arrangement of Satin Doll. This is going to feature Gabby Sanchez on vocals. And it's going to feature Noah, Noah Brown on tenor sax solo. So this is Satin Doll, Duke Ellington. And, of course, the lyrics are by Johnny Mercer, the great uh, lyricist Johnny Mercer.
Willis Sanchez. Noah Brown on tennis sax. Speaking of great musicians from Ohio, there is Tad Dameron. Tad Dameron, one of, in my opinion, the four great composers to come out of the bebop era. Uh, and in that regard, I, I hold him up there with Horace Silver, Thelonious Monk, Tad Dameron, and of course, Charles Mingus. Tad Dameron from Cleveland, Ohio, really created this body of work, these body of compositions that has really kind of lasted despite the fact that Tad in his life wasn't, as, as a matter of fact, I would dare say Tad still is not as well known as some of his other counterpoints, particularly the other ones that I've mentioned, um, Horace Over, Thelonious Monk, and Charles Mingus. Tad Dameron has some amazing body of work. Uh, there's an album called Mating Call, and it's all compositions by Tad Dameron. It's a uh, John Coltrane album. It's a wonderful album on a misty night. Uh, there's some great stuff on there. Um, Tad Dameron is just one of those composers that you ought to know if you like jazz. This is a piece called If You Could See Me Now that was, I think, written specifically for Sarah Vaughan, uh, and it's very well known, very closely associated with Sarah Vaughan. However, this version is from an album by the Dizzy Gillespie Big Band from about 1957 or something like that. And it's interesting that this arrangement that I, I didn't know existed until I found it recently is, like, oh wow, this is, this is I, I love this. And um, it originally featured a male vocalist, but um, the range is, is, it's gonna work for Gabby. So Gabby's gonna make it work. And uh, it's going to feature Lizzie Gillespie. We couldn't get Dizzy, so we got Lizzie Gillespie. Liz, uh, Louis on uh, trumpet back there. So she's going to sit in for Dizzy. This is if, it, if You Could See Me Now. Oh, by the way, the arrangement is by Melba Liston. And that's another person that you should know. Melba Liston, one of the great compo arrangers, comp composers, but specifically arrangers, great trombonist, and one of the few women in jazz that really kind of rose to the top in bebop. There were, of, of course, a number of great uh, uh, women musicians um, um, or in that jazz world, but she kind of rose to the top and as an arranger really kind of stood out in the 60s into the 70s and into the 80s. Uh, Melba Liston is another person you should know. This is Melba Liston's arrangement of Tad Dameron's If You Can See Me Now.
Gabby Sanchez. Tell you a little bit of something about Gabby Sanchez. Gabby Sanchez is one of these musicians at Ohio State that is in just about every area of performance and music that you can be here. She is in the athletic band playing piccolo. She, of course, plays in flute here and jazz and she sings. She's in the gospel choir, she's in the opera program, uh, and you know, some of the concert bands and stuff like that. She's now, correct, she's in a chorale. She, she does everything. She's one of those students that you absolutely dream of having. Gabby Sanchez, how about another hand for it? <laughs> and of course, since I'm introducing Gabby, I gotta introduce the rest of the band, I guess. Noah Brown, tenor sax. <laughs> Justin Bays, alto sax. <laughs> Luke Hintersheed, alto sax. Tito Leung, tenor sax. The Tito Leung fan club is right there, man. All right. Joel Caniff, Barry Sax. CJ McGee, bass bone. Jacob Smith, trombone. David York, trombone. Ash Markham, trombone. Ben Dixon, trumpet. Elizabeth Lewis, trumpet. I guess you got fans here too. Connor Allen, trumpet. John Hano, trumpet. Michael Payton, guitar. Drew Powell, piano. I don't believe you like him that much. Oh, I don't believe you. Oh, let me brag on uh, Tristan. I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about some, something about Tristan that's kind of cool. Tristan is, of course, the bass player here, but I didn't know he was a bass player. He, I, I, I actually knew he was a bass player, but I didn't realize that he's actually a guitarist. But I didn't even know something else yet. He's actually a percussion major who plays guitar, who switched to the electric bass, and for the first time, he's playing upright bass, and he's doing a bang-up job, filling in for Charles Mingus, Tristan Collins. And we got a couple of drummers, but who cares about drummers? No, I'm kidding. Uh, Andrew Haynes on drums right there. And Josh Summers on drums also. We've had four weeks of classes, and um, we didn't even start right away with the uh, rehearsals because we had to do um, auditions and different things like that, and these people are doing a marvelous job. One more hand for the lab band. I, they're absolutely doing a great job. We'll close our concert out with one of Charles Mingus's most famous pieces, Better Get It In Your Soul, also known as Better Get Hit In Your Soul. As I mentioned earlier, Charles Mingus is influenced by the Holiness Church. Charles Mingus has three big influences. Uh, Duke Ellington is a huge, tremendous influence on Charles Mingus. 20th century classical music, oddly enough, because he was really into uh, the, the, the modernist composers, Schoenberg, people like that, really got into them. Uh, through his bass teacher when he was young. And the holiness church, Charles Mingus's mother was very, 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 very holy. And he had to go to church, had to go to Wednesday night prayer meeting, had to go to Sunday night prayer meeting, had to go to uh, Saturday morning church. And the holiness church is a very, very, very particular style of worship. Um, they call it sanctified. Um, one of the tenets of, of the holiness church is you have to be consecrated and sanctified, and you have to show that by speaking in tongues. That's one of the things that you find in the Holiness Church. Um, there, there's a particular uh, church 
uh, one of the, the most visible denominations of the Holiness Church. There's a couple different branches of Holiness Church, but the Church of God in Christ is probably the most well-known of the Holiness Churches, and a lot of their church practices musically are very, very incredibly unique, wonderful, and um, Charles Mingus wrote a number of pieces that incorporate that. Three pieces in particular that are very, very indicative uh, or evocative, I should say, of the Holiness Church. Um, Wednesday night prayer meeting, which was the first of the tunes that he wrote of this ilk, uh, Better Get It In Your Soul, we're going to play tonight, and another piece called Slop. And those three pieces are, but he has other pieces, but those are the ones where you hear the real direct, direct link to the Holiness Church. This is a, a tune that is um, a very, I know so well, my dad, this is, this is one of those tunes my dad taught me. This is a Frank Smith tune. Uh, my dad was a, a huge, huge jazz fan, historian, jazz fan, and uh, this is one of those tunes that he taught me. Uh, this is Better Get It In Your Soul.
Thank you very much. OSU Lab Band. Jazz Ensemble will be on soon. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.
How's everybody doing? That's great. We are the Ohio State Jazz Ensemble. And let me introduce the band to you. On saxophone, Jared Shackelford. Stand up when I, come on. Dustin Ferguson, Dustin Ferguson. Terrence Farmer. Ben Sim, and Ben Consker. On trumpet, Ivan Murray. Kaylin Quigley. Ethan Cavanaugh. 
And a special shout out goes to Elizabeth Lewis for doing double duty. <laughs> On trombone, Levi Steenride. <laughs> Parker Lewis. <laughs> Brendan Akins. and Brianna Heath. And our rhythm section is Hunter Mills on guitar, Nathan Snyder on piano, Victor Madeleine on bass, and our drummer is Andrew Tice. So the next selection that we're going to do is going to feature a DMA clarinet performance major, Jachi Liu. <laughs> Jachi Liu. Come on out. I think he's trying to figure out how to decode the door. And while we're... Come on out. Yes. The first couple selections that we played were uh, um, sweet, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> such, such sweet thunder, which is kind of ironic that I was having trouble remembering that if anyone knows what my nickname is. And Jeep's Blues was the second selection. We're gonna continue on with Idiom 59, part two. Here we go.
Thank you. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about Duke. So Edward Kennedy Duke Ellington was born 1899, uh, April 29th, April 20, uh, 1899, and passed away May 24th, 1974. Just so happens that he passed away in the year of my birth. He was an American jazz pianist, composer, and leader of his epon uh, eponymous <laughs> jazz orchestra from 1923 through the rest of his life. Born and raised in Washington, D.C., Ellington was based in New York City from the mid-1920s and gained a national profile through his orchestra's appearances at the Cotton Club in Harlem. A master of writing miniatures for the three minute 78 RPM recording format, Ellington wrote or collaborated collaborated on more than 1,000 compositions. His extensive body of work is the largest recorded personal le jazz legacy, and many of his pieces have become standards. He also recorded songs written by his bandsmen, such as Juan Tizal's Caravan, which brought a Spanish tinge to big band jazz. At the end of the 1930s, Ellington began a nearly 30-year collaboration with composer, arranger, pianist, Billy Strayhorn, whom he called his writing and arranging companion. With Strayhorn, he composed multiple extended compositions or suites, as well as many short pieces. For a few years at the beginning of Strayhorn's involvement, Ellington's orchestra featured bassist Jimmy Blanton and tenor saxophonist Ben Webster and reached a creative peak. Some years later, following a low profile period, Hodges temporarily left, Johnny Hodges is talking about, uh, an appearance by Ellington and his orchestra at the Newport Jazz Festival in July 1956, 1956 led to a major revival and regular world tours. Ellington recorded for most American uh, record companies of his era, performed in and scored several films, and composed a handful of stage musicals. Although a pivotal figure in the history of jazz, in the opinion of Gunther Schuller and Barry Kernfeld, the most significant composer of the genre. Ellington himself embraced the phrase beyond category, considering it a liberating principle and referring to his music as part of the more general category of American, of American music. Ellington was known for his inventive use of the orchestra or big band, as well as for his eloquence and charisma. He was awarded a posthumous Pulitzer Prize Special Award for Music in 1999. Right. And uh, on our next selection, we are going to be featuring, uh, new to the jazz faculty this year, Professor Chris Anderson. This is Black and Tan Fantasy.
Professor Chris Anderson. Yeah, man. Next, I'd like to invite, uh, also new to the jazz faculty this year, Professor John Douglas, jazz trumpet. We'll be doing a portrait, portrait of Louis Armstrong.
Yeah. Very nice. That's called All Too Soon. All Too Soon. The next one that we're going to play for you is uh, composed by Billy Strayhorn. It's called Blood Count.
Thank you very much. Once again, the Ohio State Jazz Ensemble, give them a hand. <laughs> Saxophones, Jared Shackelford. <laughs> Dustin Ferguson. Terrence Farmer. Ben Sim, Ben Consker, Trumpets, Ivan Murray, Kaylin Quigley, Ethan Cavanaugh, Elizabeth Lewis, Trombones, Levi Steenrod. Parker Lewis, Brendan Akins, and Brianna Heath. And our rhythm section on guitar, Hunter Mills. On piano, Nathan Snyder. On bass, Victor Madeleine. And on drums, Andrew Tice. All right. We have one more for you. This is Anitra's Dance. Thank you. 
Everybody stand up. All right, now on three. One, two, three. Thank you very much.